All right, everyone. So I was going to do a whole video on balancing and everything. Turns out everything is already the same weight. So um, I'm trying that post here. Four ninety nine. Four ninety nine, four ninety nine, and then four ninety nine. So hold up, yeah, four ninety nine. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, there's not really a lot we're gonna be able to discuss on this. I'm just gonna walk through the steps of how we're gonna do that. Stand by, because here we have a little scale on the side there, and I'm just gonna walk through what we're gonna be doing. So with piston balancing, obviously we've done the uh, we've done the rings, so they have a weight. You would measure the rings by themselves, maybe individually, maybe as a group, uh, but they they weigh about what's that, 22 grams. So uh, you can maybe mix and match rings if you really want to. Um, however, we did them with cylinder, so we're not really going to be worried about that. Uh, we have our gudging pin. So normally, if you were to adjust your weight, swapping out of the gudging pin is going to be the easiest one. This one's coming in 116. Um, so you would probably work on that. And then obviously you have your two um, uh, snap rings, circle clips, snap, snap, snap ring circle clips. Uh, they come in at actually supposed to be two grams, but about one gram each. Obviously, the, the the ratio on my scale ain't that good, so I can't get it perfectly to size. Um, I swore I had one here. I don't know where the scale went, and then obviously the piston by itself, which weighed oh yeah, the two grams on there, and then the piston of itself that weighed uh, three hundred and fifty eight, and all these then com together combined to form our. Um, Wait, so if we were to sort of let's say let's say we have this one here and let's add an extra snap ring on there right and then weigh that in so we'd come in at it's missing the gadget pin so I've just got to get that back in there right so let's say we would have that we would get coming at 500 so we would basically take this one off now there's a few things you can do um, let's take this out here so you guys, I can show you guys what's happening and then obviously we don't need three, we just need two, but for us that's good. So we're basically going to look at the piston and look like where's our string. So obviously this area here, that's going to be low being pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling. Don't really want to mess with that. This is your compression surface, you don't really want to mess with that. Um, so, you know, there's not really much area here where you can work on now. What you can do with this is if you want to, you want to add a little chamfer on this. If you were to uh, look very closely... See that there's almost like a little chamfer on there, so a little 90 or 45 degree angle. So on there maybe we can see better this way. Yeah, there you can see the chamfer running across there. So that'll basically show you um, here. So you want to get like a rotary tool and just like run across that line there, and then on the other side run across that line there as well, increasing the size of the chamfer. Alternatively, what you can do, you can also polish pistons, um, but that's like minimal, minimal weight reduction. So you want to like run along the edges there. Uh, obviously, mine's now already. Uh, done so um, no point in adjusting the pistons on that uh, so let's put those aside for now uh, let's have a quick look at the rods okay so apparently the rods also all weigh the same so interesting thing I wanted to cover with you guys so basically if we were to look at the old cone rods here that we have there and we would weigh them down it would weigh in at about 601 grams right so now if we look at the new ones we're replacing them with we're looking at 585 so interesting thing that we have all this extra meal added i will make another video on that on how we're going to do that and why that happens uh so i'll try and explain the inertial features of this rod uh, the best way i can well let's uh let's have a look at that because these things have the bearings in so let's compare them um i'm pretty sure that the bearings are not that heavy but obviously you've got to compare apples with apples right so it's got to take that out there I have another rod, yeah, here's another rod without bearings in though. No. Sorry about that. Check your camera. So another rod. This should be lighter than that one. So it's supposed to be slightly, slightly different. Yeah, so 570 versus 585, 586. So about 15 grams difference between this rod and that rod. And um I will make a video on like how we how, what the difference is on that. But they all basically weigh the same. Um Again, so I don't want to basically cover a lot of details on that, but
but uh, if you were to wanting to adjust the weight of these you would basically wear on the smallest one I think that's it. you want to do that because that's the load surface this area here is basically just going up and down the separating mass so that won't really affect it so what you have with this one is you, you would have as the crankshaft would rotate you'd have a rotating motion there so you would want to basically also run a chamfer on the on that fillet side there to break it down to get a little bit of uh, a little bit of weight down and everything so i think these ones were precision measured so let's quickly measure them 585 and get the other ones quickly they're just in the box over here uh, let me pause here quickly while I get them ready. Okay, right, so carrying on there. 585. 585. 586. That's pretty 585. Measure it now. I'll put it because it scales here now. Try that again. 586 for some reason. Um weight probably changed somehow i'll just have a look into that so i'll just double take that off camera again yes yeah, 585 there again um so keep in mind you have your reciprocating mesh which you want to balance you want to balance this end not that end don't really want to take off there because you'll weaken the rod i um, mean and exactly a lot of metal there already uh but that's basically the engine balancing in a nutshell for this one fortunately uh, i can't show you guys much of that because well they don't need balancing if it's not broken don't fix it um, so that'll probably give us a good idea of what's happening. So um, next it'll probably be on the rods on these, and we're going to dive into the details of the rods, how they, why they are the way that they are, and the designs and things on that. So uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching that. Sorry, a little bit of disappointment on the uh, balancing. We won't actually get to see how that's done, um, but obviously you know our, our, our parts are good, so we're pretty much ready for throwing those in the engine. I'll see you guys in the next one with the next video, and uh, until then, have a good time.